All right, welcome back. Um, lots going on out there in the world, and uh, we're here in New York. We see what's happening. Supposedly, there's riots going on in New Jersey. Stuff is happening in Trenton. Um, and now, from what I'm hearing, the next attack spot is Newark. Um, to uh, see what's happening in the Garden State right next door, take the temperature. A guy who knows all about it joins me as usual on Money Monday. My money guest, Fernando Uribe, is here. He's a uh, faculty member at Bergen Community College. He's also the uh, host of Politically Direct on Insider NJ. Fernando, thanks a lot for joining me. John, thanks to be uh, here about lead off today with you. Man, uh, so tell me what's going on. I don't know if you were watching. The Liquid Lunch studio got broken into. The windows got bashed in. I just found out this morning. Um, and it seems like all over the country, cities are burning. I hear Trenton's having problems. I hear there's going to be another Antifa thing in Newark. Um, what are you hearing? Give us the lowdown in New Jersey. Well, John, you know, as if 2020 couldn't get any worse, but it definitely has with these protests. And I know that all throughout the state of New Jersey, we saw some demonstrations in Atlantic City. I know the mayor yesterday had to enact a curfew because it also got very rowdy and very disorderly. Uh, we, we're seeing, you know, a protest, uh, you know, even as down the Jersey Shore in Long Branch, they were relatively peaceful, but even in Newark, they were getting a little rambunctious. And John, let me just say this to our audience today. And one of the things that's really infuriating about what's going on, and I'm, you know, I'm sorry to hear about the Liquid Lunch Studios. I mean, again, it's that, that, that sort of just despicable behavior cannot be tolerated, but it shouldn't surprise us with this mayor uh, who has been anti-law enforcement for as long as, as long as he's been in office. And right now, when we're talking about these protests and sort of, you know, a cause and effect to it, it seems like what's getting lost, John, is this idea or this sort of narrative that, you know, you can be against a police officer unjustly murdering a black man uh, in broad daylight. And you can also be against the rioting, the looting, and the destruction of, of public and private property. The idea that you can't, you have to be one or the other right now in this political climate, John, is asinine. And I don't understand whether it's celebrities, whether it's elected officials, and especially mayors in liberal cities. I don't know why, what's so difficult about distinguishing the two. Uh, the idea that, you know, you can believe that both exist, um, you know, is, you know, plausible. But I, I, again, it just boggles my mind, John, about what's going on right now uh, with so many people in the country. Yeah, I can't believe it. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, listen, I'm, I'm still, I got a knot in my stomach, literally. Okay. Um, Target says that they're closing 175 stores because this seems to be a big Target. Literally, pun intended, right? So uh, I guess it's easier to loot the big stores than the small stores. Does that mean 175 small stores can open? I don't know if you saw the clip in the beginning of the show, but two guys who have an Italian specialty store here in New York, um, they're standing inside the front door of their store with shotguns. They got legal licenses for their guns. They're standing there with shotguns and basically saying, you come in my store, I kill you. Um, and I think they'd be well within their right. Nobody wants to see somebody get killed, but it's getting that crazy. No, it is. And again, I applaud those those business owners specifically uh, because, again, they're, they're not being vigilantes. They're taking matters into their own hands. They're acting lawfully. Uh, as you mentioned before, they have a license to own those firearms and they're protecting their property. And as, as, as it pertains to Target, you know, such a big corporate conglomerate, uh, that's smart of them to close down as many stores as they can because they are in the peripheral vision of people all across the country. But more importantly, John, it's the small business owners that I really truly feel for. Because Crazy. Never, mind, never mind the impact this pandemic has had on small businesses, which again are the lifeblood of this economy, but now they're also being looted and they're being vandalized and they're being just absolutely destroyed. It, it, John, it's inexcusable. I can understand people wanting to protest peacefully, having a rally, having speakers, where it's orderly and it's, again, yeah. it's done in a peaceful manner. Again, you're exercising your First Amendment right to do it peacefully. Yeah, but the, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm not using the word protest anymore, okay? You can have a protest. You can have a rally. Those are peaceful. You show up, signs, chants, yes. speeches. Those are protests. Let's not, I'm not going to minimize it anymore by calling it protest. These are riots. Um, I misspoke only because, you know, when I see a great Italian specialty so I immediately assume it's New York, but I'm told from one of my viewers, Bobby Schatz, my good friend, that uh, that Italian specialty store is in Cleveland. 
So uh, thank you for uh, Italians in Cleveland for representing for our nation of origin. But the same thing's going to start happening here. If people got gun licenses, they're going to go sit in their store with their guns. And I don't think we need, you know, a civil war between Americans over looters coming in their store. And, you know, what happens when the first store owner kills a looter? Um, we could really light a fire keg out there, and it actually could happen. I mean, I, I'm literally, at this point, starting to think that we're in a really dangerous, really dangerous zone. And uh, supposedly de Blasio's saying here in New York that he may implement the curfew and a lockdown. So we'll see if he takes any steps yeah. at all. Um, Again, this idea of a curfew, John, I mean, we're seeing in a lot of these cities, they're not working. And... Yeah, right. Point, Hell yeah, go home. <laughs> yeah, and, and to your point about business owners, I mean, I'm all with them. If, if they're going to protect their property, uh, listen, God bless them. Uh, certainly, we don't want this to get ugly, but it certainly has the potential to. And I might be showing my age a little bit here, John, but this sort of takes me back to the early 90s, shortly after the Rodney King incident and what happened to Los Angeles. And in the years since then, we've seen riots like this all over the country. And I don't want to minimize what's going on right now because we're seeing people dying out in the street. We're seeing people getting seriously injured, people that are just innocent. And unfortunately, uh, right now, as you mentioned before, this has a very civil war type of uh, you know, component to it. And I'm not being hyperbolic here either by saying that because it's pitting residents against people who are either coming out of town, people who are looking to be destructive. And quite frankly, John, this is just this is not the American way. As you, as you said before, these are not protests. This is just an outright riot, a destruction of property, and more so, it's just a desecration of our communities. And I don't understand why people don't get that. How is this honoring the memory of George Floyd? How is this honoring the memory of a man it's who not. was... He's lost, a, he's lost in the mix. Yeah, he's just lost in the mix at this point. A guy died. That does not mean we stop burning down the country. It means that most of the country was actually united on something for the first time. People across all spectrums were like, no doubt, no question, cop wrong, arrest them, try them, fry them. Okay, everybody was on the same team. And now this causes more division. Fernando, um, Trump took some strong steps, which I appreciate, and hopefully others will too. He designated Antifa as a terror organization. Um, he's taken some action. He's going to hold people accountable. In our final two minutes, tell us how, what you think, how important that is. I'm absolutely with the president on this. Antifa has been a reprehensible and despicable organization, John, since their existence. But I've talked to some attorneys over the weekend who have reached out to me, friends of mine that went to grad school with me and then proceeded to go to law school. And I think there's one major component that could be problematic here from a legal perspective. And again, I'm not an attorney. I'm sure when you get attorneys on the show, they'll be able to tell you. Uh, but again, the idea is that, you know, the U.S. government can prescribe a First Amendment protected activity, you know, you know, inside the U.S. to domestic organizations. Now, it, it, this doesn't apply to foreign ones. So I think that this is this, this is where the rubber meets the road. And I think this is where legal scholars are now going to start perhaps either taking the president to task or asking the president and or Attorney General William Barr to clarify their position, because there's no question we should vilify mm -hmm and crucify Antifa for their just reprehensible actions. And we've seen them forever, going back to the night of, of the election in 2016 to the present. Uh, but right now, I think a lot of legal scholars, John, might come at the president and say, you know what, there's, there's some technicalities here we have to sort of iron out as to whether or not even an executive order uh, will stand the legal muster. So I think it's a wait and see, but uh, I applaud the president for putting Antifa uh, on the national stage and saying, you know what, you're responsible for a lot of, uh, of this rioting a lot of this destruction of property, and a lot of this just this reprehensible behavior, which again, John, is not, this is un-American. This is not, as you said, these are not protests. These are outright just desecration of our communities, and it has it's to crazy. stop. Crazy, it's crazy. All right, Fernando, we gotta leave it there. Thank you so much, brother. Um, can't have a better guy in the leadoff spot to kick off a Money Monday. He's a money guest. He's the uh, host of Politically Direct on Insider NJ. My good buddy, great friend of Liquid Lunch, and uh, stay safe over there, brother, thank you. All right, breezing through the uh, first hour here. Um, family physician, uh, Dr. Vindia Gandhi, is going to join us right after this. Um, June is uh, Men's Health Month, um, and there was a lot of great men's health 
uh, going on yesterday as uh, guys were getting trims and cuts and everything else. But uh, we're going to talk about this. We're going to talk about these Antifas. Um, we need, may need to cut off more than their hair. Um, sometimes you got to do is cut off the head of the snake. And uh, we're going to try to keep the pressure on the mayor to do just that. Back after this.